going on everybody? Welcome to CS5 Unmasked, bringing you another costume tutorial. Now today I'm going to be showing you how I made the Jason Part A costume from Jason Takes Manhattan. Now even though this isn't my favorite Friday the 13th movie, it's probably one of the better outfits that Jason has ever worn. Now being as the whole world has been suffering from the effects of the coronavirus, I really haven't been able to shop at my local thrift stores or even stop at yard sales to pick up any of the items that I use to make the costume. So almost every single item that I'm going to use for this costume has either been donated or it was items that I had just sitting around the house. So I don't think it's necessarily fair for me to actually put a price tag on this. So for the few items that I actually did have to purchase for this costume, I will show the price and the place that I actually purchased it from. But for everything else, I'm going to leave it blank. So this is just going to be a tutorial on how I made the Jason Part 8 costume. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and see what we're gonna need. We're going to need a mask and a hood, a black work shirt, a set of black gloves, black work pants, and black work boots, and some form of undergarment that we can use to simulate some rotted flesh. Now, I did look at lots of photos and watch the movie several times prior to me making the costume, but it was kind of hard to know exactly where all of the damage needed to go for the outfit. So I ended up just using the model from Friday the 13th, the game. Now this had incredible detail, and exact locations where all the tears and the damage to the clothing needed to be. All right, let's go ahead and start with the shirt. Now I just used a Sharpie to outline all the damage on the shirt and just taking a regular pair of scissors, I went ahead and cut it out. Now we're gonna repeat the same process to the pants. All right, now moving on to the hood. Now originally I was just gonna buy one online, but I really couldn't find one that actually mirrored the one from the movie. So based on a lot of subscriber suggestion, I decided to go ahead and make one. Now this is the very first time of me actually making a Jason hood, and even though it didn't turn out as well as I wanted it to, I still think for my first attempt, it did turn out pretty good. Now I'm gonna start off by using the standard balaclava, because I felt that it was actually gonna work better than anything else. Now fortunately, I do have a dummy mannequin head, which is gonna assist me in actually making the hood. But if you yourself do not have one, a inflated balloon or even an old milk jug might even do the trick. Now referencing lots of photos, I'm gonna start by outlining the top part of the hood. This is where the skull is actually exposed, which I think is actually really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and mark out all of the other damage on both sides of the hood. Now I do have a couple different color acrylic paint that I'm going to mix together to try to match the color of the actual skull. Now I just started off using just a regular paintbrush and that seemed to work pretty good. But ultimately I did have to go down to a smaller brush just for some of the finer detail work. Now as far as the fleshy parts of the hood, I have a couple of tubes of silicone here, one gray and one brown. I'm gonna go ahead and mix those together and see what I come up with. Actually, the color really isn't that bad. Now I started off using an oversized popsicle stick to apply the silicone to the hood, but it really wasn't working out that well. I eventually just ended up using my hands. I seemed to have a bit better control and there was a lot more consistency in what I was doing. Now we're gonna go ahead and darken it up a little bit. I'm gonna be using some lightly diluted black acrylic paint and just put it all over the hood. I'm gonna allow that to dry and I'm gonna repeat this as many times as possible until I get the look that I want. So now that the hood is done, let's go ahead and move on to all of the exposed rotted flesh. Now fortunately, I do have a mannequin to assist me with this, and my good friend gave me his morph bodysuit, which will make this costume look a whole lot better. But if you don't have a bodysuit, some old insulated undergarments will work just fine. 
Just grab a couple pool noodles, or even a two liter soda bottle, place it in the sleeve of the arm or in the leg, which will overall help when you're applying the simulated rotted flesh. Alright, using the Sharpie I went ahead and marked out all of the areas where the rotted flesh was going to be exposed. Now I went ahead and put a bit of the brown silicone on one of the areas that was going to be exposed, just to kind of see what it would actually look like. Now I did start off using the oversized popsicle stick, but I really wasn't happy with that so I ended up just using my hand. And once I was satisfied with that, I went ahead and moved to the next step. I put a little bit of grey in my hand along with some yellow acrylic paint, mixed it together and then applied it to the brown area. This is actually looking pretty good. I repeated that exact same process on all of the other marked out areas. So in total I did apply two separate applications, allowing it to dry overnight in between each application. And it actually did turn out a whole lot better than I thought it was going to. So this is definitely going to be something that I'm going to continue on with additional costumes in the future. And I may even go back to some of my previous costumes to see if I can actually improve on what I've already done. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the gloves. Now these are just standard black gloves that I had laying around for another costume. I decided to end up using it for this. Now for the right hand, I'm going to cut out a small section in the palm so that the center of the hand is actually exposed. And then I'm just going to trim off the extra part of the glove that I don't need. Now as far as the left hand is concerned, I'm going to cut off the tip of the pinky along with the tip of the thumb and removing the excess part of the glove that I don't need. Alright, moving on to the mask. Now this is just a cheap $2 mask that I got on eBay and even though that the quality is not the greatest, it will work for what we're trying to do here. Now we're just going to go ahead and sand the mask. Once all the sanding is done, I'm going to mark out the axe wound on the top of the head and then using a pair of scissors, just cut it out. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and paint the mask. Now I'm just going to be using some standard Krylon yellow paint and primer and I'm just going to do about one coat. Alright, now for chevrons. I'm going to go ahead and use the ones that I bought from JDF Studios for around a dollar, but if you don't have any other choice, some red masking tape will actually work just fine. Alright, I'm now going to mark out where all the scratches are on the mask. Now I'm going to be using a sharp object to actually make the scratches. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and start dirtying up the mask. Now I'm just using some diluted black paint. I'm just going to gently dab it onto the mask, let it dry for a few seconds, and then gently rub it off with my fingers. Now I will do this as many times as necessary until I reach the desired look. Alright, now I'm going to dirty it up a little bit more. Just using some diluted brown paint, I'm going to gently apply it to the mask. And again, I'm going to repeat this as many times as necessary until I reach the look that I want. Alright, now for the green parts of the mask, I'm just going to be using a green marker and just apply it to key locations around the mask.
All right, so I really want this mask to have really high shine so that it looks like it's wet. I'm going to apply three coats of high gloss clear coat to the mask. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and make the strap for the mask. I'm gonna start off by using D-rings, which I actually got from this small dog harness that I picked up at the dollar store. All I'm gonna do is cut them off of the harness and then set them aside. Now for the metal banding material, which is used to connect the D-rings to the mask, I'm just gonna be using this metal sign that I picked up at Home Depot for under a dollar. I'm gonna make a little template about two inches long and about three quarters of an inch wide. I'm gonna trace it out onto the metal sheet. Using metal shears, I'm just gonna cut them out. And now I'm just gonna clean them off just using some rubbing alcohol. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and fold them in half where the shiny metal side is actually exposed. I'm gonna place the D-ring inside. I'm gonna clamp it down using a set of pliers. And then using the metal shears, I'm gonna go ahead and round off the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and put a hole in the metal strap. This is so that we can attach it to the mask. Now I am using a drill, which does make it quite easy. But if all else fails, you can use a hammer and a nail. It's a little more difficult, but it still gets the job done. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some sandpaper and just rough this up a little bit. Then I'm gonna take some black acrylic paint and just paint over the sanded areas. I'm gonna let this set for about a minute and then I'm gonna gently wipe it off. This is gonna give it this gray, dull, dingy look and that's the look that I'm going for. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and attach these to the mask. Now I'm just gonna use pop rivets and washers, and with my pop rivet gun, I'm gonna secure them to the mask. Now we're gonna go ahead and make the strap. Now this is some pretty standard elastic material that I did purchase at Walmart for around two bucks, and it's really easy to work with. I'm gonna cut off a piece around 13 inches long. This is for the strap that goes over the top of the head. I'm gonna loop one end about two inches long, and then seal it together with some hot glue. And for the other end, I'm just gonna fold it in about an inch. This is the part that's gonna go through the D-ring. I'm gonna loop it through, and then again, hot glue it together. Now for the strap that goes around the back of the head, that's around 14 and a half to about 15 inches. And I'm just gonna repeat the same process. Now as far as the actual hood, I think it actually turned out pretty good for my first attempt. But the neck is a little bit long, so I am gonna trim it up a little bit. Now all in all, the costume is actually pretty much complete, but I really wanted to make it look wet and slimy. So I had shopped around and looked at a whole bunch of products that would actually make it look that way, but a lot of them were kind of out of my price range. That's when I came across this product. It's called Wet, and it's made by the people over at Fright Props. I will leave a link in the description below if you yourself would like to purchase some. And in actuality, for what it does, it's really not that expensive. Now I'm just gonna pour a little bit in a cup and just apply it with a standard paintbrush. I went ahead and put a pretty heavy coat on the shirt, allowing it to dry. Then I flipped it over and did the same thing on the back. And then I repeated that same process with the set of gloves and also the pants. So all in all, I did about two coats on the shirt and only one coat on the pants and gloves. And I only used about a half of a bottle. All right, now the costume is complete. Let's go ahead and try it on and see how it looks.
I want to thank everybody for stopping by and checking out the video. I really had a wonderful time making this costume and I absolutely love the way it actually turned out. So if you guys have any suggestions for future costumes you'd like me to make in the future, let me know down below. Alright everybody, this is CS5 signing out and I hope to see you in the next video.